the way you're going to get him to kill him in that cow in that uh, snare is you're going to have to get him to wrap up on something. If you tie up off the ground a little bit higher, the more tendency he's going to have to go over the fence. And if he gets up and goes over the top of a four or five foot fence, uh, he's pretty well going to hang himself. The other thing that you can do, of course, if you're not sitting at a fence and you're sitting in a trail, naturally if there is some cover there, some trees, small trees, saplings, whatever, and you can tie to those and get him tangled up pretty quick. You can take another stake, but drive it in the ground to where you got about 10, 12 inches sticking up. And he, when he gets in the snare, he going around, 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 he's going, and you want to make sure that this is close enough to where you've got the snare anchored that, it, that he's got room to reach it where he can wrap around it. And that's right where he'll be, laying right there. And his, his nose and his neck will be right up against that stake tight. And that's where he'll be dead. Since you already have the gear, you know, trapping season adds a lot of fun. There's four months you can go out and check your trap line. I know a lot of old timers that do this. It's a great hobby, and you won't believe how much fun you can have out there. Mink, raccoon, coyote, bobcat, give it a try. I started in 1962 as a 14-year-old boy, and uh, the first time I saw a muskrat, the first time I squeezed the springs on a trap, I was hooked for life. And you want to go down and take a look at those? Tim and I will come over here and take a look at these. Okay, we don't have anything in that one. These guys are happy to have you here. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, I've trapped this lake for going on, I guess, about 30 years, you know, since the 70s. And right. Talk about the damage as we're walking along here a, a muskrat can do to somebody's farm pond. They're bank burrowers. Uh, they really like dams, burrowing into the dams, the lakes, and any, any high, steep bank, they like burrowing into that. And, uh, you know, I mean, if they're not trapped and controlled, they just get out of hand. Uh, these lakes here, they've had some major damage over there, you know, on the, on the dam that we walked across. Uh, they had to rebuild that, bring tons and tons and tons of rock in and heavy equipment and compact that and, and redo it, so. And that's a little guy who does so much damage, damage drilling through. That's about an average size adult, yeah. Well, this is a cage trap, and the way it works is you got two levers right here, and the rat goes in. And they can't get back out because he's shut. And they're traveling under this channel right here. Uh, I've trapped these places for years and made friends with these landowners. Uh, we, we provide them with a free service. Uh, they're not having to pay an animal damage company uh, $75 for each raccoon they catch and $150 for setup. We come out here and do it recreationally for free. This is a trail, and if you follow this trail, it goes over to that big sycamore right there. And the raccoons are denning in that tree. They'll be checking it out, especially this time of year, for females, because it's their breeding season. And uh, I, like to, I like to keep a few traps on these type of trails. I catch a lot of raccoon on these trails. Raccoon. It's a boar raccoon, not a real big one. Nicely furred, though. You got to be very observant to, to be a decent trapper, I think. So these fur bears are in the middle of the food chain right now with no predation, except for automobiles, some hunting, and so forth. But what happens is um, these, these animals are quick uh, reproducers. They reproduce very quickly, and in a short time, they can fill up an area past the carrying capacity of that area in terms of food, nutrients, and so forth. Uh, they're prone to diseases. Ross, follow that trail down to where that goes into the woods there. We got another snare down here a little farther. For youngsters, it's a great way to burn up the, you know, a lot of energy. Uh, uh, there's a lot of drugs and alcohol around. Um, a lot of kids are getting into drugs and alcohol. I could be doing sports, but this is just my enjoyment. This is just what I do. I like being outdoors. Neither of my parents hunt or trap or any of that. My parents are both city slickers. They grew up in the city. They'd love it. They'd love me being out here. Well, you respect life a lot more. You, you respect the wildlife. I, I had no idea 
I mean, I didn't even know trapping still exist. I didn't know about mink. I didn't know raccoons, foxes. I thought foxes were all extinct. Uh, everything I based was off Disney, and you, I mean, you come out in the real life, and it's not like it. That's just not the truth. With every trapped animal, the, the care of that fur begins as soon as that animal's caught. Uh, if it's wet or muddy, we try to clean that animal, dry it, and brush it before it's skinned. Um, we never stick a knife in any animal that isn't clean, dry, and fluffy. That's our cardinal rule. So what we'll do is basically remove the pelt, and uh, they're actually sold to the fur buyers. It's what you call raw fur, but they're basically skinned, fleshed, and dried. Where do you get a trap like that? And most of this is kind of specialized equipment, you know, the traps and the, the pack baskets, the tools, the sifters and whatever, and the lures and the baits and so forth, you know, right. so uh, it's not real readily available, I mean, as far as walking into a Walmart or something like that and buying a lot of this stuff. Uh, right. Most of the equipment I buy, um, I buy through uh, trapping publications and magazines, I buy at mail order. Um, uh, I also attend trappers conventions. If I wanted to do something like this, if I was going to set a couple traps, at what point do you have to have a license? If, even if you set one trap? Uh, you have to have a trapper's license, Tim, yeah. And um, even if you trap on your own land, you still have to have still a trapper's have have a trap license. license. Well, it looks like Ross snared him a gray fox here, doesn't it? Way to go, Ross. I got a butt whipping over Davy Crockett. I cut up my aunt's mink coat while she was in Florida and made a hat. And I cut the sleeve out of it because it fit right over my head. And I cut a tail out of the middle of the back. I was sewing it. <laughs> it's about eight years old. Yeah, I had to have a Davy Crockett hat, and they wouldn't buy me one, so I better make one. <laughs> uh, it's something we enjoy doing. It's in our blood. We we want to do it always. Uh, I don't really know how to explain that. It's just it's just one time outdoors. I'm addicted, and there's nothing else like it. Kentucky offers two great trapping organizations, United Trappers of Kentucky and Kentucky Fur Takers. Both offer a monthly magazine, how-to seminars, meetings, and workshops. Now, if you want more information on trapping, contact them.